بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه وله أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. So continuing with our theme of الأمثال. الله تعالى says بعد عوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم. قل أن ندعو من دون الله ما لا ينفعنا ولا يضرنا ونرد على أعقابنا بعد إذ هدانا الله كالذي كالذي استهوته الشياطين في الأرض حيران له أصحاب يدعونه إلى الهدى ائتنا قل إن هدى هدى الله هو الهدى وأمرنا لنسلم لرب العالمين الله سبحانه وتعالى says say and this, by the way, is in response to the disbelievers saying, come back to our disbelief, come back to shirk, come back to kufr, and so forth. And the Prophet is being commanded to say this in response to deflate their hopes and dreams, to let them know that, no, there's no going back to disbelief after you have believed. And by extension, we should all say this. Qul, say what? Shall we invoke instead of Allah that which neither benefits us nor harms us and turn back on our heels after Allah has guided us? If we were to do that, in other words, Ibn Ashur says, if we were to become apostates, we would be like the one who the devils, a shayateen, and by the way, shayateen can mean from humans or jinn. We would be like the ones who the devils entice to wander upon the earth confused, while he has companions inviting him to guidance, saying, come to us. Say, indeed, the guidance of Allah is the only guidance, and we have been commanded to submit to the Lord of the worlds. So there's a few points that I'd like to make from this beautiful mithal, this beautiful parable from the Quran. First and foremost, why would anybody pray to something that they know cannot harm or benefit them whatsoever. And the answer is actually in the ayah right before it. This is ayah number 71 of Anfad, uh, of An'am, excuse me. The right before it, surah, uh, uh, ayah number 70 says what? الَّذِينَ اتَّخَذُوا دِينَهُمْ لَعِبًا وَلَهْوًا Allah Ta'ala describes these disbelievers as those who take their religion as amusement and diversion. In other words, why would somebody pray and worship in some sort of a religion that they know doesn't make much sense and they don't really pay attention. Does this make any sense? Does it work? You know, is this having an effect? No, because this is just a social gathering. We just do this to hang out. We just do this to connect with one another. This is the way families get together and we have nice dinners together. This is the danger. When it becomes more social, more about play and fun and so forth. So they're just taking religion as being part of the in-group. So then, Allah Ta'ala has us responding and saying, وَنُرَدُّ عَلَىٰ أَعْقَابِنَا بَعْدَ إِذْ هَدَانَ اللَّهِ Should we you know, turn back on our heels? Are we really going to do that? No, the answer is no. If we did so, we would be كَالَّذِي like the one who استهوته الشياطين في الأرض like those who, it's a bit of a bad translation, the word استهوى coming from either the root of هويون which is a fall or هوى or أهوى the desires and استفعل the verb implies يعني الطلب طلب الشيء what does this imply? So basically, this means استهوى means that they're calling this person to fall and also means, as in you're in a high elevated status of faith, I'm calling you to fall and trip and go down. I'm also calling you what? To follow your desires. Istahwa, I'm calling you to your ahwa, to your base desires. Fil ard, specifically materialistic desires. I'm calling you to give in to your most base desires. This is how these shayateen, they want them, this person to uh, fall deeper and deeper into abject materialism and abject materialistic desires to the point of love and obsession. Why? SubhanAllah, this is what happens when the disbelievers become desperate. When they can't force you to leave your faith, then they resort to playing on your weaknesses. And they try to entice you with every advertisement, every jingle, every, everywhere you look on your phone, things are popping up. Why? They're trying to pull you away. And then Allah describes them as what? Hayran. The second uh, quality they have is Hayran. Hayran can mean two things, confused and also hesitant. Hesitant because you know this is not the right thing to do. You know it's a bad idea, but they're calling you to it and you're being confused, you're not really sure. And what's so beautiful about these two words coming together, istahwa and hayran, is that they go perfectly together. Because why? When somebody's falling down a cliff, they don't usually fall very symmetrically and uniform like a diver. Usually when you trip and fall, what happens? You're spinning, you're disoriented, you don't know what's happening, you're confused, you're worried about the landing. And so therefore you are both istahwa, you've been called to fall, and you're hayran, you're completely out of sorts. And furthermore, when somebody is chasing desires, uh, the desires change frequently. We know this. We know this about desires. You want one thing so fervently one moment, and then two seconds later, you want a different desire. And so when you jump after one desire to the next, so fervently, you are hayran. So istahwa and hayran go so perfectly together. Because when you're chasing desires, you're always chasing different things, and your whole life is one confused mess. Now, the last few points I want to mention, I want you to pay close attention. Then, Allah says specifically, this is all happening. You're calling me to this confusion, to this falling down and going to a worse state. 
Meanwhile, what? Lahu ashabun yad'unahu ila al-huda i'tina. Meanwhile, while you're calling me, guess what? The believers are calling me too. The, the companions, my, my friends, my believing friends who I used to be part of that ummah, they're calling me, inviting me to true guidance. Something that actually makes sense and saying what? I'tina, come to us. Pay close attention. They're not saying, read the Qur'an. They're not saying, accept these logical points. They're not saying, let's debate about it. They're not saying those things. They're just saying, what? Just come to us. Very, very deep and important point to learn here. What is the point? It's teaching us about the, the, a powerful lesson about da'wah through companionship. Da'wah through companionship. People who leave Islam because of the allures of worldly things, of worldly life, need to be reintegrated through the allurement of what? Of brotherhood and sisterhood. Why? Because it wasn't sound arguments that made them leave, and so it won't necessarily be sound argumentation that's going to bring them back. Now, I'm not saying avoid making good points. Of course, make amazing points, inshallah ta'ala. But what's important is to recognize, and by the way, there's been statistics about this. In North America, there were statistics done regarding apostates, people who left Islam. And they said, we're not judging you, this is not an attack, we're not trying to convert you, we just want data on why you left. And overwhelmingly, it was not due to rational, logical reasons. It was not that, oh, I studied books of fiqh and aqidah and so forth, and I came to the conclusion, it's no good. It was not the case. You'll often find the vast majority of what? Those who leave Islam, uh, I didn't like the people of the masjid, they were rude, they were very cultural in nature, they were too harsh on me, they're always judging me, and so and so. It's, it has to do with what? People, not with the deen. SubhanAllah. So Allah Ta'ala here is highlighting what? Be their friend. Itina, come back to us. Because that's the argument and that's, the, 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 that's what's going to persuade them, inshallah ta'ala. And then finally, Allah says what? قُلْ إِنَّ هُدَى اللَّهِ هُوَ الْهُدَى Say what? Say that indeed the guidance of Allah is the only guidance. This person may be thinking, the person who left Islam, they may be thinking, well, I found Islam to be true at one time, and that means I'm a rational person, but guess what? I'm capable of leaving it and finding a rational religion somewhere else. If I found truth once, I could find truth somewhere else. Why? Because, you know, there are many truths out there and everything's relative and so on and so forth. However, Allah Ta'ala is saying what? First and foremost, you're failing to realize that guidance is a gift of Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala. It wasn't entirely due to your independent, brilliant mind, number one. And number two, there is no equally legitimate religion. There's just one. The guidance of Allah is the only guidance. The idea that, oh, I found one truth, so I'll go find another truth. No, it doesn't work like that. There was only one. If you leave it, then you're gone. SubhanAllah. And also, what another point that's very important is that it, you know, this idea that truth is relative. The idea that, oh, truth can be whatever I want it to be, my personal truth. You know, you follow whatever makes you feel good. A'udhu billah. Allah Ta'ala specifically says, If the truth had followed their inclinations, the heavens and the earth and whatever is within them would have been completely ruined. SubhanAllah. This idea that, oh, there's multiple truths and I'll find whichever one I want. It doesn't work like that. There's one truth, and if the world were to follow just everybody's desires, everything would fall apart. So yes, there are two groups competing, calling you, but you have to recognize as a believer that truth doesn't vary depending on which group is dominating, which group calls you more. The fact is, Allah Ta'ala is the only objective source of truth. Al-Haq, Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And then finally, because you recognize that fact as a believer, Allah concludes this ayah by saying what? وَأُمِرْنَا لِنُسْلِمَا لِرَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ And therefore, since we know that Allah Ta'ala is the only objective truth, every group is calling you to submit to their personal idea. You certainly can't submit to all of them. You can't please everybody. So at the end of the day, just submit to Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala, the Lord of the world. Jamdal khairan. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh.